But again, I'm just going to make a couple of comments. Sure. I remember being in the lab, and there was a very procedure. And I remember my chemistry lab, and we were making nylon. And I remember the procedure and just the steps to make that nylon. And it was, it was a combination of various chemicals, and it was a procedure. And I remember filling up the lab pages. And, and, and I said, OK, we, 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 we knew that, but it was basic elements and components and compounds. That just pales in complexity, the, just the, uh, the coagulation process. Like the, I, I had never seen that laid out like that. And that's kind of fascinating to me because uh, I, I would say, God, each one of those steps would take a book. Yeah. And, and, and then, the, and like I say, and I listen, and, and like I say, I think there's maybe some theory we haven't figured out yet to explain all this, but I still think there's a spiritual context to it. And I read a book called The Divine Matrix by Greg Braden. And it gets me thinking, like, how did, how did these, when I made nylon, I knew this. How did all this complexity, the, the, the four, you know, everything just come together? And I started to say, God, there, there, there must have been some divine field or something. Because the way things are mixed together, I mean, I'm looking at this guy who made, I designed circuits, wrote software, I did all that. And then I heard Wayne Dyer say, the Boeing 747, with all its complexity, and all the wires, computers, and I would have worked on advanced fighters and top secret stuff and all this. But the eye, just the way the eye works, all that stuff just pales. I mean, we haven't even envisioned it yet. So I'm, 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 I'm not going to ask you who was that gentleman you said, you just said Will somebody? No, you no, no um, Wayne Dyer. Now, who is Dyer. Wayne Dyer? Tell he, he, is a, he is a spiritual philosopher, I would say, okay. that talks about that we can. He's, he's sort of like we can improve our lives by changing our attitudes. He's a positive thinker, yeah. very spiritual individual. Yeah. He, he does mention God, but he's a very trained, he was a psychologist and a philosopher. So he's a modern uh, of the spiritualist movement, mm -hmm. we'll say. So yeah. he's secular, in fact, but he's very spiritual. He has studied uh, the, spirit, the Tao, he studied Christianity. He's a Christian by birth. And, studied uh, you know the Tao and all the various philosophies so he's more of a philosopher he's actually studied all the great philosophy but back to the point is that I'm saying that was amazing and I mean just the way the combination and then I'm going to just make one other point to throw out the other thing that kind of leads me into this we'll say divine matrix or field because how does this all know I mean I was very proud of myself to make that eye line get my pencil and it took me all day to damn in the lab to get it done you make you know? a in about 100 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> my dad was a chemist and stuff he was but um, I'm just saying it's just like there's another field they're finding out too which is kind of fascinating and it's a scientific called epigenetics and I look at the gene structures as like a keyboard a keyboard of life we eat dominant genes play and stuff like that. But epigenetics now, which is, which is being done by scientists, uh, medical doctors, is showing that it's like the placebo effect. Why does the placebo effect work? And doctors will tell you, the placebo effect does work. And now they're tying into a scientific thing is that some, it may work because by thinking we're being cured and having that, let's say, if it's a spiritual belief or just scientific belief, our genetics start acting differently. The genes that were recessive may be come into play. Genes that were, we'll say, um, not functioning properly or were a gene that would cause something are becoming recessive in them. So it's like different, uh, an orchestration. And it, it is amazing that can happen through the way you think, what you eat too, because you can put chemicals in. That's all part of nature. There's a book called the uh, the Garden of Eden that talks about all the herbs and all the plants. And a child can ingest a certain plant or a pharmaceutical. It will change. You can look at your genetics or change your body, kill the thing, or maybe change the vibration. But what is vibration? We're part of a divine field. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying that yeah. they're showing that there's so much more we don't it's even understand than the epigenetics. It's just like placebos work. And it, they can tie it and look at the genes, but I'm saying, starting with those four amino acids, all those strands, and they and, and somehow our living organism knows how to combine all that in that special order. I, 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 it befuddles me, and I say there has to be a spiritual matrix or you know, something going on that we can't have. Well, that means you're not a materialist, and you would say the placebo effect is probably not material. I think it's part of the, of the spiritual plan that we can heal ourselves through right. our minds. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, Jay Kaplan just came in. He's going to take over the rest of the time. Come on, Jay. <laughs> That's all right. You are gotta, you ready? Got to know where your priorities are. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a little gambling. <laughs> I hope you won. Of course. Burn drinks on Jay, Otherwise right? Otherwise, I would have been here earlier. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Will. That was very exciting. Well, you yeah. know, one of the reasons the placebo works, though, is because before the person gets the medicine or the placebo, uh, they are sending the messages throughout their body that they're under stress, they're worried, they're upset. When they get the placebo or the medicine, they relax and all that, all that uh, chemistry that you're sending through your body now has totally changed. Yes. Now, if you're really in pain, a placebo won't work. I mean, there are times where uh, you just can't overcome yeah. Well, because pain is a neural, a neural type of thing. Oh, where okay. the, even if you change your genes, it's 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 something that's really tapped the body. It's been damaged, and that takes a lot more so than just thinking yourself well. But cancer can be reversed. You know, yeah. if the genes kick in properly, and your immune system, which has an amazing intelligence, Deepak Chopra talks about one of the most intelligent organs, and it's actually the largest. One of the larger organs is our immune system, mm -hmm. and it knows exactly what to do. Well, deep, is Deepak Chopra, um, um, what is his uh, world view? He is a medical doctor. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, what's his world view? What's that? He's an atheist? No, no. he's, a, he's okay. a Hindu. Hindu, okay. Hindu. But what you're saying is when you're talking about placebo effect and you send messages through the body and uh, so forth and so on, that, that is still information technology. That's going in, and you, there's no explanation of how that happens. What I'm saying is not a material thing. Well, in a way, it's material because when you're yeah, but under you know stress, how to do that? Do you know how to do that? What? Uh, do you know physically how you're going to send messages to all different parts of your body? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to do that. Yeah. I mean, how does that actually happen, though? I'm not yeah. talking about your mind thinking. <coughs> how does it actually physically well, happen? Well, the thing is, if you know how to relax your state is going to be much different than if you're agitated. Okay. So right then and there is, and you have the control of that. That's why meditation is good to relax. Yeah, it see, allows your body to heal itself. Of course, yeah. Anybody else want to make any comments or <coughs> questions? Just here. Well, I uh, truly believe that when I came to this, <coughs> I was going to see where maybe it would change my mind, but to me, all it did was reinforce the fact that in the, in the beginning, God created things. After he created the earth, he began beginning and began creating those things on the earth from the earth. So all the biological stuff from the earth, including us, was created. So all our DNA is going to be somewhat alike. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this didn't show me that that's any different. Uh, <coughs> And, and how it works is, is beyond us. Like you said, the scientists don't really know. No, so don't therefore, know. why should I, why should I uh, uh, worry myself to say I need to find out how it works as long as it works in my body? And it doesn't work perfectly in my body. I agree with uh, Sharon, uh, Sir Sharon's idea that we were born, or born, we were made originally by God in perfection. The well, only thing he did, the only thing he did that allowed us to go wrong was to give us free choice. Right. And then the angels who were supposed to not have free choice was the impression I had. Apparently <coughs> some of them certainly did. did. Some of them apparently did. Uh -huh. Because a third of them went, on, went with the went with the devil. And that's how we, we came in for and once that imperfect imperfection happened, mm -hmm. all the rest of it just comes out in bad DNA, just like my uh, leukemia is bad DNA. I, it was perfect for years. And then all of a sudden I got what's called a jack two. And it jacked me up pretty good because mm -hmm. now I've been on, on medication for almost three years now, I guess. But 